Well, look, they're advertising Tombetta House yet again. The wild dogs absolutely love Tombetta. There you go. Free advertising. <laughs> See, they're thinking where to go, but quarantine, as I just mentioned, is actually the most perfect place for dogs to hunt. It's open, but the grass is long enough right now. They're not big. Wild dogs are not big. They've got sort of long sausage bodies and long legs, but they're not huge. And you see them all in a line. I think they're going to start hunting. And Pala are the perfect prey. For wild dogs and they hunt by coursing oh there's a hyena right here no it's not hurt i think it's comet excuse our rain pole i could be wrong but it looks like he's blind in the right eye are you just going to follow the dogs the entire morning that's a little bit naughty okay let's just get a little bit closer simon <coughs> yes it's comet <laughs> Especially with the grass being long. Excuse me, Comet. <laughs> you can really easily lose dogs. So they hunt by coursing, and what that means is it's nothing like leopards and lions, nothing at all. They outrun their prey. They just run, run, run. Their bodies are specially adapted, unique specializations to run. They've got enlarged nasal passages and they'll just keep going. Their bodies are light, their skulls are light. Nothing weighs them down, not big shoulder blades like leopards, not lots of muscles like lions. And they'll either catch their prey and start to disembowel it while it's running, which I know sounds very unpleasant, or they'll wait until their prey drops from exhaustion or just generally tripping up. But I must say, they've got about an 80 to 85% success rate, and they kill very, very quickly. It's a lot quicker than the likes of your leopards and lions. It's over quickly for the prey. You're all seeing such a lovely surprise. I know. Simon and I had no idea they were there, and that's how it works in the wild. You've just got to search. Some days you're lucky, and some days you're really not. But every day Simon's been saying, I want to see the Madash, I want to see the Madash, and here we have them. And you see, they're used to hyenas following them. They have a very strong smell, and it's not pleasant. Everyone is really not pleasant. And look at Comet, he's staying far away, but they're used to hyenas. And normally when dogs make a kill, the hyenas will come in and try to steal it. It's just how it works out here. And the dogs sort of fight back, the hyenas fight back. But essentially a pack this size, I'm hoping that some of you can send in the IDs for this pack. A pack this size could kill a hyena, absolutely. But it's rare. They tend to just... Like leopards and hyenas, they tend to just battle it out. The dogs are used to hyenas appearing and trying to steal their kill. Wild dogs are not really scavengers. They do tend to make fresh kills a lot. And because they have such a strong odor, it's very easy for hyenas to follow them. Some are walking right past Tombetta and some are walking straight. The pack's splitting a little bit here. And it's such an almost altruistic society, a wild dog pack, altruistic. The social dynamics of a wild dog are incredible, and I think if I had to be any of the apex predators out here, I would choose wild dog. Just for the pack dynamics, not for the smell. I don't want to smell like a wild dog. But it's an even tighter society than hyenas. There's no hierarchy as such like the hyenas. There's an... Okay, okay. I'm not a... I don't want to lose the dogs here. They're going in a direction I thought they wouldn't. Comet, my dear. Where are you going?
Now we have a traffic jam. Toot toot, Comet. There you go, that's my boy. Leah, they get food. Wild dogs, as I mentioned, are, don't really scavenge. They tend to make fresh kills and they're messy. Ah, they tear the kills apart and they leave the remains behind, especially bones and all sorts of inedible parts. So mostly, the hyenas get a free meal. I'm just keeping my eye on all of them. There's some here as well. So it's a win-win for the hyena every time, so it's worth just following them. They're very messy eaters. Just like a shark, they sort of tear things apart and things go flying. Oh dear, it's toilet time. Uh-huh, well spotted, Simon. Mmm, very well spotted. Normally in Pala, do not alarm call for dogs. There's no time. You've just got to run. But wild dogs will eat a variety of prey. There's actually wild dogs in, I think it's near Botswana, where they're known to take down buffalo. Buffalo. They're famous for it. But to be honest, at least in the low veld, at least in this area, it's mostly Impala, Steenbok, Diker. But they can go for much bigger prey like wildebeest, even zebra. All they need is for this, the prey species to be on the ground. It's so nice to see dogs again. We go through periods of not seeing them. And in periods of seeing them everywhere. Has anyone been able to identify this pack yet? Hashtag Wild Earth. Looks like there's lots of puppies. Okay, so we're not sure what pack it is, but it's been confirmed that it's not the Pungui pack. Aha. Uh -huh. But these are definite youngsters. You see that? <laughs> Africa's second most endangered carnivore. Next to the Ethiopian wolf. Trunk, you're asking at what age do the pups start really moving with the pack? Anywhere around six to eight weeks, you'll start to see the pups really moving with the pack. They do den, and they're normally said to be sort of sedentary to that den for about three months. But normally the, the adults will start to get the pups moving, but they may not travel great distances. But they'll be highly mobile after three months, and they'll leave the den. They're no longer sort of relying on the Dane after three months. They'll follow the adults by scent and they'll start to learn how to become a wild dog. But around the eight week mark, they do start to move a little bit. They do start to spend a little bit of time away from the Dane, but not following the pack like this. So the Daning period is a three month period and they're very much restricted to one area. And Paula is doing very well to stand his ground, I must say. Maybe he fed already. That's a possibility. The sun's quite high in the sky. They could have already had a meal. Now, there's very little aggression within a pack, and that's what's so beautiful. Very little aggression. And they all sort of submit to the alpha pair. All the dogs respect and come under the alpha male and the alpha female, but the puppies in any pack are the most privileged. The puppies will always get looked after. And 
And if a dog becomes really ill or injured or just elderly in general, which restricts them in their effectiveness at hunting, the rest of the pack actually cares for them and feeds them. That's how sort of strong the bonds are in a wild dog pack. They all understand their place. And I believe there was an alpha female fairly recently in a pack from Botswana. And she lost one of her four legs in a hunt, which was rather sad. And really, for any other predator, that would be a death sentence, completely. But she remained the alpha female for quite a few years after that, even with one foreleg missing. <laughs> Excuse me. And she continued to breed and raise pups because she was being looked after by the rest of the pack. That's incredible. It's all remarkably quiet here. Normally, when you find wild dogs on quarantine, it's mayhem. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stay with this pack for as long as I can. What a fantastic start. And we're now going to send you across to Andrew to say good morning.